what's up guys this is Matt sitting here with Anthony AC fly fishing uh, just gonna give you guys kind of a quick primer um, talking about our spring fishing but kind of most specifically March first half of uh, April kind of talking about before the general trout season opener um, kind of what's open and and what we've got in store uh, so Tone what's up what do we got in store here for March I'm excited man this is this is the time of year we start getting pretty antsy and excited about our spring trout fishing. Um, the last few months we've been running around different places and chasing winter steelhead, which can be can be a grind at times. Um, but we're settling down a little bit now and, and really focusing on spring trout fishing. March historically um, can be one of our favorite months on the Sacramento River and some of the smaller rivers in the area, the upper sack, the pit, to name a few. Um, but really the lower sack, March, early April, one of my favorite places to be. Um, unfortunately, last year we kind of got our spring season taken yeah, away. I mean, I kind of forgot about that. We really didn't get to spend that much time on the river in March, April. Yeah, um, great conditions we had last year. It looks like we're going to have very similar conditions this year with, with kind of a medium water year, um, not Definitely. a ton of big runoff to, Definitely. to absorb. So. Um, I'm expecting awesome fishing in March and, and sure. April this year. For sure. Let's just kind of backtrack for a second. So we're talking about the lower sack. When we talk about the lower sack, what, 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 uh, there's, sometimes there's confusion, I know, between mm -hmm. lower sack, upper sack. So when we're talking about the lower sack, what, what do we mean? So from Redding down to Red Bluff, essentially, the tailwater section um, of the Sacramento River um, from Shasta Dam down 35, 40 miles to Red Bluff, essentially. That's where our prime trout habitat is. Yep. Um, cold water, a lot of bugs, and a lot of eager, healthy trout. Yeah, so we're talking about below Shasta Dam, mm -hmm. the, the uppermost reaches on, uh, for the, of the lower sack. Exactly, right. exactly. That's where a lot of the confusion comes in. Um, yeah, so lower sack, so that's, I mean, that's right here in Redding. Um, yep. For people that, that don't know and want to come fish it, I mean, Redding is, is, is the best place to lodge if you're going to fish the lower for sack, sure. right? For sure, yep. And we'll fish from Redding, you know, it's 15 to 20 minutes from the handful of boat ramps that we use throughout the course of the year, especially in the spring. Yep. Um, so most of the folks coming up fishing with us or fishing the area, um, we'll stay in Redding and from there it's pretty short reach to get to where we want to get. Yep. And Lower Sack, we're fishing for trout, obviously, rainbow trout. Yep. Um, what type of, what type of trip is it? What type of, fi what type of fishing are we, are we getting into? For the most part, um, we're nymph fishing from drift boats. Um, year-round on the lower sack. The spring, the one cool thing about the spring, really depending on flows and conditions, which it looks like we'll have this year, we have the chance to fish um, fish dry flies a little bit, probably more consistently in the spring than any other time of year. So there's little windows throughout the course of the day where we'll have some fish looking up, fishing a short leash dry dropper, fishing some dry flies. Certainly we catch a lot of fish under the surface, great time of the year to do that. Um, but it's really fun for some of us at times when the conditions are right to get a dry fly rod out and set up and, and commit to doing that for an hour or two each day. Cool. Yeah, um, no doubt. As the weather warms up, you know, we start getting our yeah. PMDs, right. our caddis start to move around. We've got bugs around the fish are, the fish are eager. They're in a frenzy to eat. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's, that's, I, I, I want to call that a secret, but I mean, <clears throat> most of the time when you're on the lower sack, <clears throat> you're, you're sitting, you're, you're indicator fishing from the drift boat. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I guess the lower sack definitely isn't isn't known as a dry fly fishery, but springtime is, is is one time of year where I don't want to say it's consistent because it's never super consistent. But that's of any time of year, that's probably our most consistent bet to find some some rising fish, right? Hundred yeah. percent. March and April, right. um, those fish are hungry. The flows are right. Looks like they're going to be great this spring. Um, fish will pot up a little bit, and when there's bugs on the surface in certain areas, you know where to look. We can fool those fish yeah. um, on top, and it's. It's an awesome change of pace. It's a little right. more slow pace. You're hunting, you're going slow down the river. Um, super fun, I love it. Sure, we're gonna catch fish below the surface, but slowing some days down and doing that when the opportunity shows itself yep. is a freaking blast. Absolutely. So lower sack, so we're here in Redding. We're fishing from a drift boat. Uh, a lot of, in, mostly indicator fishing, mm -hmm. uh, but this kind of time of year, we, we definitely hope to find some, some pods of rising fish and get to fish some dry flies. Uh, just for some folks that haven't done it or kind of don't know, is there, is there any kind of like skill level barrier in order to kind of fish this river? Is there, you know? Yeah, so I think, um, especially in the spring, the sack can be very accommodating to people that haven't done a lot of fly fishing. Um, especially the lower reaches south of Anderson, the fish are eager. Fishing, fly fishing is never easy. We never want to say it's easy. But in the springtime, March and April, um, the fish can get, get a little, you know, 
a little extra fired up because of all the bugs after a winter of you know less bug activity less food around they're starting to to beef up during these bug hatches um, they're not going to be nearly as picky at times or as fickle um, the spring i think more than any time of year stands out for people that haven't done a lot of fly fishing um, at the same time guys that fish a lot you can come out and you can hunt heads most of the day and fish different little techniques to challenge yourself and, and still find some really neat and unique fishing in for March sure. and April. 100%. I think, I think like what I tell people a lot, you know, the lower sack, no one's going to go 100%. You're going to miss some, you're going to miss some strikes. You're going to miss oh, yeah. some fish. I mean, that's, that's any type of fishing. Um, but springtime, March is a time of year where we tend, you tend to get a lot of opportunities. So people always ask, oh, is fishing good? Not good. I mean, and the fishing is never bad, uh, but there's certain times of year we tend to get more opportunities to fish than others. Yep, uh, this for sure. is a time of year where the opportunities, t there tends to be, you know, on good days, more opportunities. Uh, so even for a newer angler or an experienced angler, um, you know, the more opportunities, the better, because it's inevitable we're going we're gonna to get some, some fish shit to out. stick. I mean, that's yep. just the way, the way things go, yep. you know. And we'll have a handful of days from, you know, March through April where it's the fish are hanging themselves. And, yeah, that's you know, always it's, fun it's hard to when, miss. It's always know? fun whenever they're real aggressive and they sort of hang themselves on the hook. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think that about kind of does it. Uh, Lodging for people that don't know, we've got some lodging options for people if they want to. Uh, yeah, we've got ride. one specific cool lodging package um, at the Sheraton up here in Reading at the Sundial Bridge. Um, super convenient, awesome restaurant and bar. A lot of our guests over the last few years have loved to set up their lodging with us there. Really in close proximity to where we fish most days. Um, great place to stay if you're if you're up in the area. Um, so we do have some some pretty cool packages for folks that are looking to fish the lower sack with us uh, this year or really any of the areas within an hour of Reading. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, let's talk about one of those other areas um, within an hour of here, mm -hmm. uh, the Upper Sack. Yeah, Upper Sack. Um, we've had some of our most memorable. We were looking at some pictures yeah, just, a couple days ago. Yeah, just the other day. Um, some of our funnest fishing can be, you know, outside of the boat, we're talking about aside from the Lower Sack, can be um, walking, wading some of the small streams, the Pit River, and we'll talk about the Upper Sack a little bit right now, but March and April can, can typically be pretty awesome. Um, there's some big fish that come out of the lake and they'll, they'll kind of spread out in the upper sack. It's small water, um, a lot of tight line nymphing, indicator fishing, a little bit of dry fly fishing, but the potential to run into a really, a true badass trout yeah. or two in a day up there is, is great in the spring. It's, it's been one of our favorite places over the last 10 years. Um, and we were going through some photos the other day and, and laughing about how fun how much yeah, fun we've was, had up was, there yeah yeah early spring of what probably 10 years ago now mm -hmm. first came up here um just to backtrack a little bit on the upper sack we're talking about what flows into lake shasta yep. as opposed to what flows out of lake shasta for the lower sack so the upper sack runs from the mountain essentially mount shasta yep um down into the lake yep so we've got a lot of river to access there yeah there's 30 to 40 miles of river from Siskiyou up there in Mount Shasta down to, exactly. to Lake Shasta. So, so I mean, like an uh, upper sack day, you could be fishing anywhere from 15 minutes to, from Redding to an hour from yeah. Redding, just mm -hmm. kind of depending on, on what piece of the water uh, you're going to be in. And that's a small stream, obviously, so we're not, not in a boat. Uh, what type of fishing are we doing up there? Are we nymphing, dry fly streamer, Euro nymphing? What do we got? A little bit of everything. That's right. the cool part about the upper sack. Um, a lot of the fishing we're going to do is subsurface, but indicators, dry dropper, um, and, and tight line fishing, Euro style nymphing, um, whatever you want to call it. There's some really cool opportunities to catch those fish in a handful of methods. We get some hatches, you know, certain days and the weather's nice, you'll have fish looking up and you'll get to fish the dry fly as well. But a really, a really unique, cool freestone venue for us in yep. March and April. And rainbow trout? Rainbow trout primarily. We'll hit a brown trout every once there in a while. But there. those those fish on the upper sack are some of the toughest pound for pound trout that we find anywhere i agree i mean for sure and like anthony said you know springtime you get a lot of the the fish from the lake from lake shasta they're going to be moving up into there so you can run into some fish that, that don't quite fit into the size of that river some, yeah. some really good size for fish. sure um yeah. yeah for sure what about when we're talking about the upper sack kind of same thing we talked about a little bit for the lower sack um as far as is there a, is there a skill level barrier is this something that somebody who's never held a fly rod could or should go out and do yeah, I mean, you're going to learn every day fishing with one of us regardless. Um, if you haven't done much of it, you're going to learn a lot, um, especially being out of the boat. You're going to learn, you know, line management, all the, all the little things um, that, that 
take the extra effort to get a fish to eat your fly, you're going to learn quite a bit on the upper sack. Um, you're not going to just show up and, and whack them if you've never done it before. Absolutely. But you're going to learn a lot. The techniques um, and the different methods we go about catching those fish. So I don't think there's much of a barrier. I think it's a, and we all agree, it's a, it's a great venue for people that have done done it a bunch and people that haven't done much of it yeah i th- I mean i think that answer kind of goes across the board for any place we fish um yeah it doesn't matter if you've ever picked up a fly rod or you've done it a ton you, the the trip would kind of vary obviously depending on your skill level but re- there's no skill there's no skill level barrier to any nope. of this anyone Absolutely come not. on out come check out the one thing about the upper sack um uh, you're not in a drift boat so some walking is required and it's not always walking on flat ground um, some mobility and you know learning how to wade the river where you yeah. want to go and where you want to get out um, that type of thing yeah for sure absolutely absolutely um, what about like what about gear do, do uh, people need to kind of bring that do they need to have their own gear prepared or no yeah so our trips are fully furnished um, minus waders and wading material um, we don't provide boots and waders folks are responsible for for bringing that up um, we have a rental program if guys want to do that um, but yeah, I mean, as far as rods and reels, you don't have to go out and spend a fortune getting gear. Um, we provide high quality rods, reels, terminal tackle, flies, all that stuff. So it, we try and make it as simple as you can show up for your day of fish and have your fishing license. When we go tackle the river, um, teach and coach a bunch, we, you know, it's, it's normal. Everyone's going to learn a lot in their day of fishing, whether they've, whether they fish a hundred days a year or they've, it's their first, first day doing it. So there's not a not a bunch for people to have to bring up and, and prepare for and fishing with us. Absolutely, absolutely. Cool, cool. I think that kind of covers that. Um, we'll get John in here a little bit later to kind of give you guys some info on a couple other venues. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm giddy, dude. I'm yeah, excited. I'm stoked too, man. Springtime. It's been a especially these last few weeks. It's been pretty wet. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Right we need for, we need the water and it's we're great. It's yeah. awesome. The rain is great. It's the grass is always greener, right? And we're not getting it. It's been a nice it. medium this winter. It's it not is, been yeah. crazy. Um, we had some good storms recently to fill up some reservoirs and put some water in the ground. But um, this time of year, I get I get very excited about our spring trout season. So it's no right doubt. around the corner. Cool. Cool. Thanks, Anthony. Appreciate yep. your time. Right on. All right.